I've seen a game about oh, about a week ago, an extremely entertaining and actually interesting game. And I thought that we can develop that one into a, our topic. Maybe today, maybe today and another day. And probably the larger topic would be, well, to trust your calculation, your instincts, and not give in, you know, to fear that you cannot really identify. For example, I've heard many times people say, yeah, I've seen this continuation. It looks, I, I thought it's very good, but, well, I was scared to play that and didn't play that. And well, what does scared to play means, really? Well, obviously, it means that there is some danger in the position, but ultimately, it means that you do not trust yourself. For example, may, maybe the most notable example, what, what would it be? That a player says, it looks good for me, but I, I did not play that. We, when will you have such examples? For example, when the king is in the center, right? When you get the king in the center and the king is under attack, you don't see how your opponent gets you, but you say, ah, oh, it's scary. What it really means is you, your brain tells yourself, I'm missing something. I see that my king is in the center. I see that it's under attack. I think that I'm better, but I don't really trust myself enough, and that's why I'm not playing that. So our topic today, maybe next one, will be king in the center or kings under attack or anything that looks a bit or more than a bit scary. But the really strong players, like really, really strong players, they trust themselves and they know very well what they are doing. And I will not uh, analyze those too much because they are super heavily analyzed positions, but we will give each one of them a little bit respect. So the first one is a game, this this what inspired me, a game between Grandmaster John Nunn, one of the top 10 players in the world, through big part or decent part of the 80s, um, he won several times the world uh, problems solving, chess problems solving, author of some of the greatest books, like s too smart of a dude. And then and seemed like one of the nicest uh, one out there. So when I was young, a kid, I mean, he was a tiny bit someone that I was always fun to look at his games and see. He's he just nicest dude out there and smartest as well. Playing against a player that I do not know that well, uh, it's in a weekend tournament in England. All right. So none is white, and this is 1981. E4, C5, Knight F3, Knight C6. Okay, mm, Sicilian. Knight F6 and E5 will get us into the Sveshnikov. Mm, G6 might get us into some version of accelerated dragon or. Marozzi, if white is going to play c4. Black play d5. Knight b5. Knight f6. Well, this d6 is another type of this Sicilian. No, not allowing the knight to go to f6, so not allowing white to play bishop g5 in some versions. Uh, for example, Grandmaster Timor Ajab, one of the top players in the world, was a big fan of this line. It's not considered mainline, mainline Sicilian, but definitely playable. All right. Knight f6. So here, of course, knight 1 to c3 is going to lead to the Sveshnikov. D6, bishop G5, A6, and so on. But interestingly enough, knight 5 to C3 was played. Oh, I'm not certain I'm a huge fan of this move. A6. Okay, the purpose of A6 is quite clear, right? Not allowing white to play bishop G5. Because white want to play bishop g5, eliminate the knight, and positionally gain control over the d5 square. I mean, this is not going to be many, t many times those position structures, Sicilian, yeah, but those are the more positional part of them. 
I don't see why checkmating here, but I see him occupying the square, the D file, the D pawn is a backward pawn. So A6 I can totally understand. White play bishop e3, which I'm okay. I'm not huge fan of this move. I mean, I'm not certain why not to play something like bishop c4 would be much more logical to me. Bishop b4, a3. Queen a5. Of course, black doesn't want to break the pin like that, right? I mean, what does black have here? Backward pawn, pair white pair of bishops, and black is just worse. So black's idea is to play this move. What, what is black's threat right now? OK, we have to understand what is black's threat in this position. Knight x pawn? My threat, black threat, your threat. That's, that's true, right? They, they, this is the entire idea by black, and that's why he puts more effort to keep the pin. Bishop c4, if I remember correctly, is the best move, and considered, considered just advantage for white. I, I think so. But in the game, white took. Very interesting. I mean, I, I don't think it's the right move. Or well, I'm at least at least I, I'm not certain why white has to play this way. But white did. Bishop c4 looks okay. Somewhat maybe s sacrificing a pawn in some version, but with a lot of compensation after bishop c4. So what 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 is white's idea in this position? Why why did white sacrifice two points? He sacrificed the exchange, a rook for a bishop. Why? Oh, no, no. First of all, it's white to play. But my question was a general one. Why, why did white play this move? I mean, what is white's big plan? White, yeah. I mean, white is the one that gave material, right? When someone is down material or giving material, you always need to ask. Either he was forced, and then his position is usually bad, or he had a plan. He sacrificed it. Is black queen seem possibly stuck over there? And with his next move, white also prevents black from castling. How can white, how can, should white prevent black from castling? Bishop c5, but bishop c5, yeah, it's a possibility. Black might play b6, it, it is a possible move. b6 is a possibility. Mm. Yeah, white played a, bi a bit more direct, but Bishop c5 is a move. Why play queen d6? Yeah, exactly. So that's his idea. Now, it d doesn't seem very comfortable to develop this bishop. Now, uh, we can analyze this game. Believe me, this was, I was so fascinated with this game. I, I, I think I've seen it for the first time a week ago or two weeks ago. And uh, it's really, really fun to get excited with uh, such amazing games. Well. Take the pawn is a possibility. White, of course, is going to sacrifice some material, but white would like to develop and go after black. But let's get to a little bit to our point. Black took. White took. Black took the knight. OK, so really crazy position. But this is just the start. Black has all his pieces blocked. White king is already on d2. White is down. Technically, if you count it, four points of material. But the thing is that black pieces, I mean, OK, the queen is the only thing that really developed. The knight is under attack. And not easy to think how to develop the other pieces. Which move makes sense here for black? If you're black, which, which move would be one of the first moves to consider? Mm 
knight to d4, but knight d4 you're going to lose immediately, right? To b4 or d4? Where do you want to go? In the game, black played knight to b4. b4. Agree. Th this was actually played. Because this is just losing on the spot, right? Queen takes e5 check and then take here and black position completely, completely collapsed. But when you're under attack, when you are not under attack, and black is definitely under attack, under pressure, what is the logical way to do? Exchange the attacking pieces, right? You want to reduce the pressure. So queen b4 is a very logical move. Well, the problem is white is just going to take, take, play a move like bishop c5. And the problem for black is, doesn't matter if he moves the knight or defends with a5, check is going to come. And now, if the king goes to one of those squares, white will have a discovered check taking the knight, the, the bishop with his knight. And if the king goes to d8, the big fork and winning back material. So basically, black is losing immediately ma a piece. And then you, will, you can still tell me, hey, but Ronan, black is going to have enough material. It will be two pieces down, but we'll have a rook and two pawns. But mm, that's what chess is about. If it was just about counting, one, two, three, four, it would be a super simple game, right? Every kindergarten will learn how to count. The thing is that if without this knight, black is lost because those are his pieces. He has no pieces and he cannot really develop them. So it's not just, hey, what is the material on the board? What the pieces are doing? Black really zero. Okay, there are other continuations, but we will go with our knight before. Bishop c5. Okay, threatening checkmate is not bad. Here, here, here. Now, we are just starting white king's march. In the analysis, none mentioned that after king d2, queen c2, the best outcome should be a draw. A bit crazy, but that's what he's, he's suggesting, like to such position. But he played queen, king e2. Well, obviously he's not satisfied with a draw. And here, knight d5, according to the analysis, is supposed to be winning. What is the difference with the king here on d2? That the bishop is blocked in many lines. Well, white bishop is just blocked in many lines. So they mentioned queen takes d5, king d8, and rook f8. Def because knight take f7 is not a fork. What is it? It's a checkmate. It's a checkmate. It's not a fork. It's a, it's a fork, but a checkmate. And here is the difference. There is no bishop to c4. And this is supposed to be winning for black. So black could have very cool defended with knight d5. A bit scary, but most likely winning. But black thought that he's going to play this check. OK, he did. And check again. Maybe black thought that this is a draw this way, or was really looking for a draw. Now, how many of you would automatically think about going back? I know I probably would be. But this is where we are, you know? Up until now, it was just an introduction to this position and to some other examples we will see today and next lecture. Look. White played this move. Yeah, I know. I, I also had this twitch in my eye and like, seriously? But wait, it's, <laughs> yeah. I mean, OK, once again, no pieces for black other than those that are developed. And they are far away from the king. Maybe the king is safer here than here. I mean. OK, white is threatening checkmate. And he has several very big threats in this position. Once again, 
Big question. What is the first move? We are, black is under attack, right? What's the first logical instinct to do when you're under attack? Check. Check. But which check? We have several checks, first of all. And the second one, if you're black, would you prefer to have the queens off the board or on the board? Off, off right? I mean, you're under attack. You, you want to get rid of attacking pieces. So how can you do that? First move to consider, queen e6. Right? But it's not working for black. Because after take, take, check. Why is it important check? And why take the knight immediately? If white takes the knight, just one threat for black, not too many. Why, why white cannot take the knight immediately? Which move? F5. F5, right. I mean, so if take, F5, four, getting back the knight, right? So that's why we have intermediate moves. Check. Very pretty one. And take. And that's strong enough. I mean, once again, counting the material, black is all right. But looking really at the position, nah. Black is in bad, bad shape. His pieces not easily developed, and black is just in bad shape. 95 is a possibility. 95 is a possibility here. But white has, there's like huge, huge, huge analysis here that we are not going to touch right now. Like huge analysis. I think white is all right after it. Like, seriously, the analysis is over two, three pages analysis just on the move 95. But that will be missing the target. Black played f5. Almost. Get there. Now, I, I've seen a lot of chess games in my life, really a lot. But I don't remember on move 19. I think sometime in later stages in middle game, obviously the super famous game, Kasparov Topalov, where Kasparov sacrificed two rooks, and Topalov King made it all the way here to be checkmated. I don't remember seeing, maybe I can do slowly, but not really in opening stages, white king on f5, when there are quite a lot of pieces on the board. I mean, but you know, this, this is really what we are doing here. Many players would look at the position and say, oh, white is crazy, white is a patzer, white doesn't know how to play chess, white should resign. But not a really strong player. You know, a strong player like none. Look at the position and objectively analyze it. If all he sees with his eyes is that white is better here, what can he tell himself? I'm not playing it because I'm scared? That's not, not, not a possibility. And there is a very, very cool line here. If check, take, take, this is totally OK for black. Well, black is up material and is somewhat alive. But this is incredible. <laughs> White king as an attacking piece. Amazing. And for example, after knight moves, how to save the rook? That's incredible. Right? That's how all black pieces are stuck, and white is winning this one. This is really, I, I said it for a re per reason. I've watched this game and I said, wow. I mean, that's what white had to play. They continue to analyze some other, some other lines here, including a move that is quite seriously analyzed is, I think, knight d5, or knight d5 after some, after king g6, they analyze this knight d5. Knight d5 immediately is being analyzed. 
Well, stop, stopping checkmate is a start. And there, just develop. Because when you are attacking, you just want to be able to bring more attackers. If the one that you have are not sufficient to finish the game, because check, the king just go here. But white wants just to bring the rook to the game. And like we said, it is very, very difficult for black to develop anything. Black played this move. That looks logical. Check plus bringing a piece back. White took. And black played this move. What is the idea? Well, the knight has to move somewhere, right? And this is logical. Why? Because it is preventing white king from moving forward. So look again, look at this position. It's not a composition, it's not some blitz game, it's grandmasters playing. Which move to play with, with white here? Bishop d3, that's not a bad one, but I wonder what, what would black play after bishop d3? Well, white played something very much in that style. Mm. Can I play check? You go here. And if this move, maybe this. Wow. That may be possible. And if check, you can reply with a check. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, I think bishop d3 is, it looks like it's possible. Let's see that we are not that we are not uh, blundering anything, just quickly, see that there is no... b6 here is a move they like, okay. Other than b6, all lines are working for black, so let's close it. So a computer wants to attack the, the bishop. Once again, complicated lines and so on and so on. I, I, I'm on purpose making effort to avoid b calculations. Much more important is to prove the point. Bishop d3, okay, logical idea, develop and attack the knight, but we see that the opponent can ignore your threat. But which developing move you can play here and the opponent cannot ignore it? Which is very important. We know that threats are forcing moves, right? But the higher the threat is, the more forcing it is. One of you are going to tell me. Excellent job. It's the same idea as bishop d3, only that instead of attacking the knight, you're attacking the queen, and he cannot ignore that. Right? When, when I'm here with the kid class, together with Ben, not to be confused with Grandmaster Ben Feingold, our cameraman, the one that, if not all the millions of people that, are, that will be watching this on YouTube, and he always, what, what? The millions. I said the millions. The millions. The millions. Thousands in attendance and millions at homes. So, for all those, we say in the kid class, forcing moves. Check, capture, threats, and the higher the threat is, the more forcing it is. Threatening checkmate, threatening the queen, eh, okay, then down. This is why I like bishop c4. You know, this logic doesn't change if you're a 10-year-old kid, 1,000 player, 1,500 player, or a grandmaster, or one of the top 10 players in the world like none. Or like suggesting that we got bishop c4, excellent. Queen h5, king f4. Yeah, look at that. Who is attacking who? Black is getting checkmated here. You want to play g4? Okay, that's it. <laughs> mm. 
this b6 okay here it is quite calcul quite calculation is important here but white played queen check g3 and now white found quite a powerful way to win the game maybe I'll give you all again one two minutes see if you can get the idea I will give you a tiny clue in chess we really want to trade a lot of time material for space or for time that's what we are trading many many times right mm -hmm. to where This move here. <sighs> what will black play then? Remember, time is huge. I see check. M maybe check. May maybe it's just going to develop like this. Oh man, this is now putting pressure on you. Next move is going to play rook e8. Time, time, time. Which move? Knight g5. The idea is correct, principally. But again, you have a very big problem to fight with. For example, if you're gonna take, if black takes, you're gonna tell me, hey Ronan, can't you see it's a checkmate? You will tell me that, right? But I see it's a checkmate. If take, check. If king here, checkmate. If king here, check. If king goes here, check. Okay, maybe it's checkmate or winning the queen because this is the threat, so he has to block. This this is going to be winning for white. I don't know if there is. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Check. Check. Checkmate. Yeah, I mean, but okay. You know, sometimes th when you you see a, a game that fin a continuation that finishes the game, you d we are not computers. Or at least, m I will speak for most grandmasters that are not Magnus Carlsen <laughs> or other people. We are not computers. So you see a continuation that, let's say, computers say plus five. Okay, my brain shuts, shuts away. Okay, winning, finish, enough. And some people just see always best line of Houdini, but that's why they play some world championship matches or you know, several other super strong players that are like that. But what is the problem with this move? check it's black black can play also and black can play check super important move developing but more important making this square available for the king so now i'm going to take and i'm going to have shelter with king c8 right so knight g5 is attacking the queen but not forced enough black has a check More forcing move. Now we are talking. Bishop e7. It has to be taken, right? Because this we know already it's a checkmate. We have already been in. This is checkmate. You see, when you're attacking like that, just in general, you don't give your opponent a minute to stand up and breed. Because, well, if he will get his pieces out, white king is not the safest in the world. White cannot allow that, so take, check, and this is finished. That's, uh, that's how the game pretty much ended. Not here. This, take, back, <laughs> and resign. I mean, black doesn't have one check without losing material. This is winning. And look at the black, how the pieces are. Now, other than the fact that this is a super duper cool game, no, like really, king on f5 on move 19, where we, we have seen some lines that white king is an attacking piece on move, no, not in an end game, 
right? Uh, whenever I see the king like on g7, it's like in soccer on minute 90, one team is down a goal, and you know, you need to have every one go, including the goalkeeper. So that's where you get the king on g7. But my most important conclusion that I want to show you from this game is, you know, trust whatever your instincts are, whatever you feel about the position, even if it's scary. Because you know what? If you are, let's say that white was wrong and he would be checkmated. Okay, it means that he would have to learn to calculate better. But the great players that trust themselves, what they, they really trust themselves. So they say, you know what? My king is here, here, doesn't matter where. I don't see any problems with that. And that's what I play. I'll show you one more game like this, even with stronger players, actually relatively much stronger players, and even more than none. Quite a famous one. And like I said, this will be a cool topic to continue for next week. Actually, I will tiny bit also show the other side. How? Not always getting, because you know you will go home and say, oh, Ronan said, get the king in the center, it's good. Uh, no. <laughs> I said really, really best players in the world. And at that time, Gashimov, I think he was like, I don't know, number five, six in the world. It's 2010. Who, who were the number one in the world? Okay, Carlsen was one, then Topalo, Vanan, Kramnik. Maybe someone else, maybe Aronian, and then Gashimov. I saw, like, he, I, I just mentioned him a little bit uh, in previous lecture. Such a genius player that due to medical problems, not playing chess actually for the last two years and probably will not play. Um, I mean, will be, will be really great for chess world if he comes back, but... So playing in the world team championship, the very strong team of Azerbaijan at that time with Rajab of Mamedeov, I mean, they had really three players that were basically top 10 in the world, top 10, top 15 against Russia. Again, we are not going to analyze much the game because this game we can analyze for one month, like four lectures of one hour we can put on this game. But we will see the main idea. Knight of defense, so that means we are going to have a big battle. And the poison pawn variation, meaning insane big battle. Um, in the World Championship match, Fischer lost one game, actually was crushed with the black pieces against Spassky with this line. It's known to be one of the most complicated lines. Kasparov has played it with the black pieces and okay. And Anand has in let's say in the last five years several big games with white and with black. Main Queen D2 is the main line, giving the pawn this way. I mean that's why it's called the poison pawn. Well, whether poison or not, we'll see. Okay. I assume everything is theory. Basically, White gave a pawn, but what he's getting? We, we said he's getting development, some attack. I want to get to the part that we are, that the king starts to be in danger. Okay, so now Black got his queen back. If White is not going to do anything spectacular, what's going to happen? Black is just going to castle develop and ask quite where is your compensation at all not not only i mean if you look at the position it's not only that white is a pawn down he has horrible pawn structure so basically in such situation if white cannot doesn't have any punch strategically is lost okay so g4 the idea is that if castle is going to play g5 and drive the knight back here, because the knight cannot go here. Who will be protecting this pawn? And then he will be targeting this pawn. For example, just, just thinking of a possibility. Castle, something like this. And suddenly, okay, no, not the prettiest thing. What would happen if this pawn moves up? This is not pretty. Why not? Actually, really, really not pretty. Black is go white is going to win the game by playing knight to d5, right? Very important. When if white can get this square, many times it's really horrible for black.
Okay, a6. Queen h3. He is stubborn, right? He wants to go g5 in some moment. Actually, right now, g5, because of the pin. This is a novelty. N, N stands for novelty. And they mentioned some other games that were played. Oh, crazy lines. I wonder who are the players in this. Some correspondence game. And if for people that are watching it online, they already know my passion to correspondence game, right? Because sometimes some strong players not the best in the world, but just decent players sitting there and they have one week to play a move or whatever. So many correspondence games are like Carlsen level or something like that because you just have time to process the moves and so on. So I really like when I see correspondence games, it's almost automatically you know that the quality is incredible. Many times, if, especially if it's top players. Okay, novelty by Grishuk. Very cool move, right? He just wants to be able to take and have the rook protected. But okay, let, let's get back to our big topic. So white is making whatever efforts to open the game. Because remember from previous game, if you are down material and you are not planning to play fast, well, why are you down material? Okay, so here we start. Would you believe me if I tell you that this king is going to make its way to here? This king is going to make its way all the way there. And black is going to win one of the most brilliant games. So that's the first move, right? Maybe, maybe now we should say, you know, instead of... Uh, we can say in the chess world, also a king's journey to eight, from e8 to a2 starts with king d7. <laughs> so here it's starting this. Okay, h8. Bishop f4, they say, is a mistake, but okay, we are not... I don't want to analyze it too much. I want to go... Queen d5. L let's stop here for a second. What did we say in the previous game? When you are under attack, what is the best way to or one of the best ways to defend? Exchange. So those principles, those ideas should not, will not change from thousand other games. And that's why, uh, the reason why I'm not analyzing them is because it will just miss the point. This game is so complicated. I want to touch the principles. Okay, another move. Moving away. Check. Okay. <laughs> okay. But black is up material. And black knows that if he's not going to be checkmated, he's going to win the game, right? If, if black is not checkmated, he's going to win the game. This is one thing. He needs to be careful not to give back too much material. And where is the best spot for his king right now? Well, he's going away from white pieces. This is where white pieces are. It's amazing. A3 was played. So what is White's idea? If take, take with a check. Why? And here, here trouble because the material is not so much in white in black's favor anymore. Just few pawns. I I say quite a lot. What is the great thing when your opponent is sacrificing you and you get a lot of material that you can? give back the material and not be checkmated and hopefully sacrificing is basically an investment think about it you sacrifice a rook what does it mean it means that you right now pay five points to have an attack if they if you, to stop the attack the opponent has to give you seven points of material then you want two points of material if the opponent can completely stop your attack and only give you back a bishop you are probably lost. So sacrifice is really an investment. Depends on if, if it's right or wrong. Depends, just like any investment, what price you are paying. So here, the price for white attack seems quite OK. He's three pawns down, but black seems like can be in trouble here. So what did Grishuk play? King up. What is the threat? that now if take, he's going to take the bishop on d3. And if take here, okay, 
you can say, hey, it looks like the previous position. Yes, only that the price that white pays for having black king there now is substantially more. Take. <laughs> Amazing. But black trust himself doesn't see how white is winning. Obviously, those are really, really best players in the world, of course. Very important intermediate move. So he can drive the white queen. Because white queen here was perfect. Preventing check on e5, preventing check on a1. Yeah, here they say this is winning. Stopping rook f3. And if b5, what is the idea of b5? Maybe check and opening attack against the king. Just to open line. Black stops all possibilities to open lines. This, this. <laughs> the king has reached its destination. So we made it all the way from here to here. But it's white attack that is probably fading away here. This move? Getting the rook in the game. Check, block. Exchange, but that just means that the game is over. For example, here, easiest way to win, simplify. Why black is up material, exchange everything. I mean, OK, rook c2 winning the queen. I, when looking at that, was just thinking super quickly about take. I didn't even look at the other continuation. Check. This is where I stopped thinking, just taking the pawn and winning. OK, doesn't matter. And, and black and white resigned. Again, this game, so much analysis we could have done. What is our point? The previous game was, in my view, even a bit wilder, because white tiny bit voluntarily actually went here. Black got a lot of material. He got paid and had to start moving his king. In the other position, white kind of didn't have to do that. Those were two very successful games of strong players. In this example, in previous one, absolutely best in the world, top 10, and that were not afraid. We will see several more of those examples of not afraid. And just to make a tiny bit tiny bit how to put it, like uh, in perspective, well, some games that actually won, tiny bit needs to be worried when his king is taken to such a journey.